meat processing industry aims to contribute towards continual improvement in WHS outcomes across the meat processing supply chain. This video aims to enhance these outcomes for meat lumping activities. The following meat lumping guidelines aim to define duty of care and associated responsibilities for people managing the health and well-being of personnel undertaking meat lumping and responsibilities for people managing workplaces where meat lumping takes place. Provide information to support good WHS management practices that deliver good working outcomes for meat lumping activities in industry. Provide assurance to customers and the general community that effective WHS controls are in place and can be demonstrated for the industry's meat lumping activities. Support the existing standards and guidelines relating to practices in the meat processing industry, including national and state WHS acts, regulations, and codes of practice, hygienic production and transportation of meat, meat products for human consumption. Meat lumping is defined as the work practice involving people carrying a meat carcass or part of a carcass in the process of dispatch and delivery of meat to customers. Both the meat processing establishments and the retail butchers who order their meat by carcass or part thereof have a responsibility to ensure that meat is handled and managed in accordance with Australian requirements. This is best achieved through a combination of industry management assurance systems as well as compliance with legislation. It is the responsibility of the operators of meat processing establishments to ensure the activity of meat lumping is carried out to a high standard and minimises injuries to workers. This is achieved by the incorporation of appropriate guidelines within the establishment's management systems. These guidelines include a demonstrated commitment by the proprietor to WHS regulation compliance and objectives, consideration of WHS practices and the regular oversight of meat lumping activities, reviewing all practices through the supply chain that impact on meat lumping activities, providing feedback on appropriate practices for undertaking meat lumping safely to their workers, transport operators, suppliers and customers. It is the responsibility of meat processing establishments to ensure that workers undertaking meat lumping are aware of their responsibility to undertake meat lumping duties in accordance with the company's policies and procedures. All workers handling meat are competent in their safe work methods. Procedures are in place to ensure that all workers on the premises conduct their activities to minimise WHS risks. Feedback on adverse WHS outcomes is provided to suppliers as well as relevant regulatory authorities as required. The management practices discussed in this video are intended to assist processing businesses with the development of relevant standard operating procedures, relevant work instructions, internal audit, monitoring and review procedures, worker training and induction procedures, it is recommended in developing on-plant and delivery procedures for meat lumping that reference to state, territory and national WHS regulation is undertaken. The guidelines for meat lumping have been separated into three different sections which relate to specific areas on the supply chain. Number one, loading out and lumping at the processing establishment. Number two, movement of carcass and product within the truck. Number three, movement of carcass and product from the truck to the retail outlet. The following video will provide detail on each section. This section of the video will show and describe best practice guidelines to follow in the loadout area of processing establishments. It is recommended that new workers in meat lumping should undergo appropriate training, including awareness of risk assessments of the site, and where required, this training should include support from a mentor who is experienced in the task and in supervising new employees. 
Where possible, the height of the rail in the loadout area should be standardised to the same height as the rails in the trucks to enable the carcass to be slid and to eliminate the need to manually handle the carcasses between rails. Where rail height in the loadout area cannot be standardised to match truck rail height, a device should be used such as mechanical articulation arms. These could be fitted between the loadout rails and the rails in the truck. These should operate and be fitted to the loading dock. They are used to hook and transfer the carcass directly from the loading dock rail onto the in-feed rail within the truck, therefore eliminating the need to manually lift the carcass. Where the previous options are not available, establishments should ensure that the height of the rail enables easy carriage on a horizontal plane for the transfer of carcasses between rails and into the truck. Rail heights can be assessed by balancing the centre of gravity of the carcass on the individual's shoulder and maintaining an upward pivot to hook the carcass onto the rail. Ensure where practical that the rail within the truck is installed and or designed to be facing a north-south orientation. This is from the cabin to the rear of the truck. Ideally, there should be a linkage between rails inside the truck to allow carcasses to be slid between rails. This is to eliminate manual carrying and transferring of the carcasses between the rails when loading and unloading the truck. The rail at the rear of the truck should interface with the in-feed rail from the loadout area. Examination of the effectiveness of lubrication of rails should occur within the loadout area and the trucks, particularly after high pressure cleaning has occurred where lubrication on the rails may be reduced. Lubrication should be maintained on the rails to reduce the force involved in sliding the hook suspending the carcasses into the storage location. Where possible, ensure that the hook that will be utilised within the truck is of the same design of hook that is used in the loadout area. Ideally, it should also be the same hook that is used within the customer premises to minimise manual transferring of carcasses between hooks during the delivery process. Where cross rails are used in the truck, identify the feasibility of using pallet bins or storage bins with a wheel-on, wheel-off storage system to reduce the dependence on the cross rails. Alternatively, provide an extension to the loadout rail into the interior of the truck to minimise manual handling when transferring the carcasses onto the cross rails. Where possible, utilise pallet bins to enable a greater density of packing of smaller carcass items and significantly reduce manual handling within the truck. Trolleys with powered tugs can also be used during the loadout process where practical. Where alternative technologies or mechanised solutions are installed in the loadout area, these need to be confirmed to be able to operate within the required space and in a manner that assists meat lumping without introducing additional risks to the worker. This section of the video will show and describe best practice guidelines to follow when moving the carcass and products within the truck. A linkage should be installed between the truck rails to enable carcasses to be easily slid from one rail to the next. A simple linkage rail similar to that used in moving between the loadout rail and the in-feed rail to the truck that can allow the hooks to pass freely should be considered. These linkage rails enable the transfer of a hook suspending a carcass between adjoining rails within the back of the truck. Beef quarters should not be double hung on hooks or ropes. This makes the carcass hang too low to lift safely at the balance point on the shoulder without stooping and bending. Where practical, Clear walkways within the loaded truck should be maintained. 
Items stored on the floor of the truck should be stored towards the sides of the truck or on removable shelving. Ensure that all truck bodies have properly maintained non-slip tread patterns on the floor and steps. Regular cleaning and maintenance of the floors and steps should ensure that the non-slip characteristics of the surfaces are in good condition. This section of the video will show and describe best practice guidelines to follow when moving carcasses and product from the truck to the retail outlet. Where possible, delivery trucks should carry connecting rails in the back of the truck. These can be modular, adjustable designs that connects the truck to the rail installed inside the retail outlet. Alternatively, if possible, it could connect to an attachment point above the shop entrance door. That is, where a shop has accessible rails, when the truck is parked outside the front or back of the shop. These would optimise the opportunity to slide the carcass between the truck and the shop to minimise manual lumping of the meat over the roadway, gutter and footpath. Trucks with access steps at the rear should ensure that the design of the steps is consistent with the Australian standards AS1657-1992. Ramps should be designed and maintained with consideration given to the force required to pull the ramp from the underside of the truck. The overall weight, angle, width and slip resistance of the ramp also needs to be considered. Where possible, the airbags on the truck should be lowered when lumping meat from the truck to reduce the height of the truck above ground level. Truck drivers should be provided with shop keys to allow for flexibility in scheduling delivery times to avoid peak hour traffic. This will allow congested roadways to be avoided and optimise parking locations that are closer to the delivery location. Due to the range of parking locations, the option of having a side door to the truck should be considered for future truck purchases. Where a connecting rail directly from the truck is not available, greater utilisation of trolleys and A-frames at the customer locations should be considered. The use of trolleys and A-frames is most practical when there is a smooth level ground from the rear or side doors of the truck directly into the cool room. However, there are other types of equipment available that will assist in going up and down stairs with limited extra effort. Where this is practical, meat lumping could be significantly reduced. In all cases, the hierarchy of controls and reasonably practical principles should be applied when determining what would be the most appropriate control measure. Consider reducing the weights of carcasses that will be carried. For example, with the customer's approval, if the half carcass weight is greater than 160 kilograms, then it could be cut down into three sections, butt, rump and loin, and a short cut four quarter. Although this may not be common from a work practice perspective, the workers responsible for loading the trucks should be different from workers involved with driving and unloading the trucks on the same shift. This is due to the accumulative physical demand of loading the full truck of meat and then subsequently manually unloading it during the night shift. Implement training and mentoring programs for all new meat lumpers. This training should be very specific and should include video analysis that allows the lumper to view their own posture and discuss this with more experienced meat lumpers or qualified personnel. Each employer should determine the profile of physical capacity and work fitness requirements for workers involved in meat lumping tasks. These need to be closely monitored and workers provided the opportunity to report any injuries as soon as possible to ensure investigation and appropriate treatment is administered. 
Provide manual task training for workers involved in meat lumping, taking into consideration the biomechanical risks associated with this unique activity. To minimise WHS issues with meat lumping, guidelines for retail outlet cool rooms should provide options to eliminate the storage of items underneath the rail in the shop cool room, where they expect the delivery worker to hook the carcass meat. Provide a clear pathway where workers are expected to walk whilst meat lumping, for example, between the entrance door directly to the cool room door. Ensure all items on counters near access pathways are free from any equipment or products that may restrict the movements whilst meat lumping towards the cool room of the store. Where reasonably practical, access paths to the cool room should be wide enough for the meat lumper to safely manoeuvre the carcass into the cool room. These guidelines were produced to assist in the reduction and prevention of accidents and injury to all employees undertaking the task of meat lumping. The following publications will offer further information. The Australian Standard for the Hygienic Production and Transportation of Meat and Meat Products for Human Consumption. OHS Reference Guide, Australian Meat Industry, 2009.